The golden dart frog is one of the most poisonous animals on the planet. Just 1 mg of its poison is enough to kill 10 to 20 humans and 1 gram can kill 15,000. It can kill all of its predators except one called Erythrolampadus epinapolis, a species of snake which is known to be immune to golden dart frog. On the other hand, inland taipan is one of the most venomous animals on the earth. Its one bite is sufficient to kill 100 fully grown men. So why is it that the former is called poisonous while the latter is called venomous? Even though we commonly use these terms interchangeably in everyday life, but poisonous and venomous mean different things. In fact, in most cases, an animal is either poisonous or venomous. Hey everyone, this is Tower Science, simplified science to make you smarter. The main difference between the two is how they use their chemical arsenal. While both venomous and poisonous animals use toxins, substances that cause substantial harmful physiological effects at small doses, poisonous species only employ their toxins to defend themselves so they can avoid becoming the meal of some other animal. It's interesting to know that most poisonous animals don't manufacture their toxins. Instead, they rely on other sources to get it. For example, pufferfish, whose toxin is deadlier than cyanide, gets it from a marine bacterium. Caterpillars of monarch butterflies eat toxic milkweed plants so they taste unpleasant when a predator eats them. The golden dart frog is believed to get its toxin by consuming a tiny beetle species. Interestingly, when they are kept in captivity on a different diet, they lose their poison. Now let's talk about venom. Venoms are mostly manufactured by animals themselves and are chemically more complex. They have to be delivered directly into the body of an organism. Most common way of doing this is by a bite. Like snakes and spiders that dispense the poison through their fangs that turn off their victim's neurological and circulatory system. Animals like Komodo dragon have venomous saliva. Stinger and spines are also utilized as venom delivery vehicles. Like stonefish that uses its spine to transport the venom and greening's frog who employs spines on his head to give a toxic headbutt. And then there is slow loris with this really strange method. They have glands on their upper arms to manufacture toxins. When they want to use it, they lick it and bite their victim. A mixture of saliva and venom is known to cause dramatic immune system response. We have talked about poisonous and venomous, but there is also a third category called toxingen. These animals don't inject their toxins, but they don't wait to be eaten either. Instead, they spray or fling their toxins at their predators, like bombardier beetles, few and fire salamanders spray it. In very rare cases, an animal can be both venomous and poisonous, like Asian tiger snake that has a venomous bite, but it also stores poison in its skin, which it derives from the toads that it consumes. We have been using the term toxins a lot in this video. Interestingly, most people have a wrong impression of what toxins mean. For something to be called a toxin, it has to be produced within living cells or organisms. So anything dangerous produced in a lab by artificial means is not toxin. It's called toxicant. Coming back to the original topic, there is a quick and rather unofficial way to distinguish between venomous and poisonous. If you bite it and die, it is poisonous. If it bites you and you die, it's venomous. Do hit the subscribe button if you like this video. Let me know what topics do you want to see next. And as always, keep learning, keep exploring until you know everything.